So the other day I was watching the popular reality TV show Hoarding Buried Alive. And I must say that is a very good show to watch if you ever need to get into the mood to clean. Because no matter how tidy you think your room is, after watching about 15 minutes of that show, you will become convinced that you're a borderline hoarder yourself. So anyway, I started cleaning and I came across this. This is my flag collection. And as charmingly eccentric as it may be to have a flag collection, I think this is a very good example of something that I am clinging to that is really just using up space. But before I think about getting rid of it, let's just go through the collection together, shall we? So the first one is this one here, which is the old flag of the U.S. state of Georgia. The reason why I own this is because in the early 2000s, it was rated the single worst flag in North America by the North American Vexillological Institute. You may remember this from my previous video on world's worst flags. But anyway, just to quickly summarize the situation, the Georgia state flag used to have a big Confederate cross on it, and this sort of became increasingly controversial by the early 2000s, and so what they changed their flag into was this abomination, which was quite literally a flag designed by committee. In order to appease the people who still wanted the Confederate cross, they put this little bar at the bottom of the previous flags of Georgia, and it says Georgia's history. The whole thing is quite a hideous abomination and was quickly overturned with a new flag that just has no Confederate cross at all. Okay, and here's another interesting one. Do you know what this is the flag of? This is, I think, one of the most counterintuitive flags. This is actually the flag of Hawaii. See, way back in the day, Hawaii used to be controlled by the British, and the British created a flag for the Hawaiians so that they could identify their ships. The Hawaiian flag is an example of a British ensign flag in which there is a big Union Jack in one corner and something else in the bottom. We may remember this from my video on Canadian flags. What is interesting about the Hawaiian flag is how it has these red, white, and blue stripes instead of just a solid colored field with a coat of arms, which is how most of the British ensign flags work. It is also interesting that the Hawaiians never changed this flag, even after they became an independent country and even after they became part of the United States. It is a little odd, I think, for a US state flag to have a Union Jack on it. Okay, and speaking of state flags, we now have this number here. This is the flag of Ohio. Now, the thing about the flag of Ohio is that the Ohioans thought that they would be very cute by having a non-rectangular flag. Flag. It is in fact the only state that has a non-rectangular flag. It's more of sort of a triangle pendant shape. But here's the thing. Most flags these days are mass produced at some sort of big flag making factory. They're generally just screen printed onto these blank rectangular templates with, I don't know, cheap ink or something. And the point is that no flag company is going to want to spend all of the time and money making a perfect Ohio flag exactly to their cutesy little triangular specifications. So what happens is that when you buy an Ohio flag, what you get is just a rectangular flag, but with these big solid white parts at the top and bottom that are supposed to be the negative space. So you see, in other words, this white part here at the very top is not actually supposed to be a stripe it is supposed to be nothing. You can also see this here at the back end where there's supposed to be a big chunk missing. So basically the only way you can make an authentic Ohio flag is to grab some scissors and chop it up yourself. And who wants to do that? All right, another fun US state flag is this one here. This is the flag of the state of Maryland. As you can see, it sort of has this medieval kind of look to it because it is based on the coat of arms of the family of Baltimore, who were the British aristocrats who founded the state of Maryland. The Maryland flag tends to be kind of controversial. Some people think it's really hideous. I always thought it was really cool. I even remember as a little kid, I had a book of the flags of the world, and I really loved the Maryland flag in the US section. I even learned how to draw it and all the rest of it. But I have also heard people say that it looks more like the kind of flag that you would see at the racetrack. I like it so much that I see I actually have two. The Maryland flag is perhaps a little bit more well-known these days because of the wire. You could often see it hanging in the office of like, the mayor and the police chief and that. All right, I see I also have a lot of these mini flags. I like to travel and for a while I had this tradition where I would always try to buy a flag of whatever place I visited. So we can see here I have a flag of Ontario and a flag of Mexico and a flag of Great Britain and a flag of Holland, a flag of Alberta, a flag of Quebec. Yes, I have been to Quebec despite being denounced by their parliament for thought crimes, but that is a story for another time. This one here is the flag 
flag of the United Arab Emirates, aka Dubai, which is where my sister lives. I guess she must have bought this for me at some point. Thank you, sister. Do you know what this one is? This is the flag of Puerto Rico. I have not actually been to Puerto Rico, but I like their flag. You might have thought it was maybe the flag of Cuba at first. The flag of Cuba is almost exactly the same as the flag of Puerto Rico, except that the colors are reversed. Alrighty, and how about this one? Do you know what this is the flag of? It kind of looks a little bit fascistic, don't you think? Almost Nazi-like. This one actually always reminded me, I don't know if you've played the game Metal mm -hmm. Slug, but in that game, the bad guys are these sort of Nazi types, but instead of swastikas, they just have these big, thick, black X's on all of their vehicles and stuff. Anyway, this is the flag of the Dutch city of Amsterdam. Don't really know why their flag wound up looking like this. I know that a lot of Dutch people watch this channel though, so if you are from Amsterdam or just from the Netherlands, please let me know what the deal is with the Amsterdam flag. And speaking of Dutch flags, here is another one. This is the flag of the Dutch province of Zeeland, which is where my immigrant mother was born. So here is a story. The Dutch were some of the first Europeans to explore the South Pacific. And when they discovered Australia, they initially named it New Holland after a a province of the Netherlands. And then when they discovered another island nearby, they named it New Zealand. Now this one here looks a fair bit like the Zealand flag, but it is not a flag from Holland. It is a flag from Germany. Specifically, this is the flag of the German province of Bavaria. Bavaria is in the southern part of Germany, and a lot of the stereotypes we have of German culture are really just stereotypes of Bavarian culture, a big one being Oktoberfest. If you've ever been to a traditional Oktoberfest, you will probably notice that they use this Bavarian pattern a lot, this diamond checkerboard of white and blue. You see it on like tablecloths and aprons and this sort of thing. Oh, and speaking of Germany, here is the flag of Belgium. You know what I mean. Alrighty, here's another big one. I'm sure you guys can all recognize this number. This, of course, is the flag of Brazil. This one has always been one of my favorite flags, the Brazilian flag. I just think it is really well designed. I like the colors. I think the shapes and the iconography is very distinctive. I've also always liked this big ball thing in the middle because it reminds me of the final boss from Kirby's Adventure for the NES. Oh, I'm holding it upside down, I see. That's the useful thing about flags when they have words on them, is you can always tell if you've got it the right side up. What does it say? It says, Ord Ordem e Progresso. I guess that is order and progress. Good sort of, uh government -y slogan. A lot of people don't like the Brazilian flag that much. They think that the colors are pretty garish and ugly, but I think it's a fun mix. Okay, this one is an interesting one. This is, I believe, this is the flag of South Carolina. I don't quite know why I have this flag. I have never been there. The South Carolina flag has been in the news a bit over the years because South Carolina, much like Georgia, is another state that has had a complex relationship with the Confederate flag. A lot of folks have been saying that South Carolinans should have more pride for this flag rather than the Confederate cross, considering that this flag with the palmetto tree and the moon has been their flag a lot longer than the Confederate flag ever was, which makes sense. I mean, the Confederacy only lasted for like, what, five years? It seems weird that that flag is sort of forever the embodiment of Southern heritage when most of the Southern state flags have been around for a lot longer. And speaking of Southern flags, I'm sure we all recognize this one. This is, of course, the Lone Star flag of Texas. It is not the Chilean flag, even though they do look very similar. I read some story recently recently about how some Texas state legislator, politician of some sort, had introduced like a motion or some joke thing where he was imploring his fellow Texans to stop using the Chilean flag emoji in their texts. Here's another fine US state flag, the flag of the great state of California. This is another very easily recognizable state flag in part because it says California in big letters on it. This is what they call the Bear Rebellion flag. The Bear Rebellion was this thing where a group of Americans who were living in what was then Mexican California staged this little revolt and and took over this city. And because they had delusions of grandeur, they declared the city an independent republic and they created this flag to fly over it. I'm actually working on a video where I tell that story in a little more detail, so I won't get into it now. Oh. Here is another Mexican flag. Ironically, given what I was just saying about the Bear Rebellion, this was a flag I bought when I was in Mexico from an American who had moved there. <laughs> Although it is not really a very charming story because I remember asking the guy why he had moved to Mexico and he basically said it was because he didn't like black people. Okay, and here is a Union Jack. Nothing fancy to say about that, but no flag collection is complete without one. Oh, and this one here, this is the flag of Luxembourg. And yes, flag nerds, before you get on my case, I know that this is not actually the flag of Luxembourg. The actual flag of Luxembourg looks like this, identical to the flag of Holland. But the Luxembourganians are aware of the lameness of having
having a flag that looks exactly the same as another country's flag, particularly another country's flag that is not that interesting to begin with. So in a lot of the tourist shops and things, they sell this flag instead, which I believe is the flag of the Luxembourgian Navy or their naval flag or something like that. It's a much cooler flag though, so I understand why they sell it. Okay, and check out this thing here. It's a bunch of little flags on a rope. I actually cut the rope into several parts, but you can see we've got quite a bunch of flags on them. This was something that I bought in Japan. Now see, in Japan, little flags on a rope is a very traditional sort of decoration that you have at like a festival or whatever. And when I was living in Japan, I once had a booth at this art festival and because I wanted to fit in, I bought some of these little flag decorations. They're just like a really cheap thing that you can buy at like any party store or dollar store. And I remember actually when I had the booth all set up, there was this Korean family and they came by because they saw that one of the little flags was the South Korean flag. And they were all so like excited and they like had selfies taken beside it and everything, even though it was just this tiny little flag. I guess in Japan, Koreans are sometimes a little desperate for attention. Okay, now this is not a flag, but I see it was in the pile. This is some sort of scarf thing for the Japanese national soccer team. I feel like I bought this as a souvenir for someone and I just forgot to give it to them. Sorry about that. Okay, and lastly, I have the flags of my two most favorite countries in the whole world, the flag of Canada, where I live. This is the flag that we always put up on display every Canada Day, July 1st. And of course, the flag of my other favorite country, the good old United States of America. This is actually a higher quality flag than some of the others. You can see it has a little wood grommet thing at the end. Although I must confess, this is not actually my own flag. When I was in college, I had this pro-America club and one of my friends let me borrow his American flag for the booth and I just never gave it back. So if you are watching this, Robin, I am sorry, you can have it back. So that about does it for the old flag collection. Let me know in the comments which one you like the best. I've been thinking about what I want to do with all these flags, and I think the most logical thing to do would be just put them on eBay and let one of you guys buy them. And then however much money I raise by selling it, I'll just funnel it back into the channel. I know you guys have really liked my flag videos in the past, so if you have any more good flag video ideas, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you all next week.